You're listening to It's Not a Show with Terry DeFrancisco and Rance Rizzuto. They're usually performers, but today they're just pals. And it's not a show. Oh, hello. Hi. I'm so glad you joined us. I'm Terry DeFrancisco. And this is Rance. Rizzuto. And this is not a show. We typically uh, we do improv and we do performing in uh, out of Columbus, Ohio, but uh, all around the world. Uh, but not now. It's not a show. No, no, no. The thing is, we we have so much pressure on us to always perform because we typically do a lot of uh, improvisational stage shows all over the globe, like Rance was saying. And since we can't travel right now, we just thought, oh, we'll do some online improv and we'll do some all kinds of stuff. We'll do some entertaining. We're doing some commercials and TV and stuff. But this isn't a show. So I'm just I, I got to say it again. It's not a show. So just lay off. Yeah. Lay off, please. <laughs> Hey, we had so much fun last night. We recorded our first pilot launch last night, the official one at least. We've been doing these kind of informally for a little bit, but then we did the real deal first one last night. And yeah. it was so, so fun. Oh my gosh. It was so fun. We had a live audience for that. This one is internal. So you're seeing behind the curtain. Tara, I had a lot of fun doing that episode with you and I had a lot of fun. Mm-hmm with uh all the people but it's also like i i like that we're kind of mixing around and going back and forth between like sometimes we'll have people that are in and we're streaming it live on on twitch or on youtube or facebook or what have you uh and sometimes we'll just have podcasts will be available to come out and as a secret spoiler alert uh, we also might have some sort of access to secret behind the scenes footage like uh a uh, an in-depth discussion Tara and I had on a, in our own home. Oh my gosh. Look, this morning uh, we woke up and we were so fueled from It's Not a Show that we kept arguing mm-hmm. about, is it an argument? A tete-a-tete? Tete-a-tete. A tete-a-tete. Uh, we kept going, talking about one of our hot topics from last night, the dumb, the dumb, uh, dumb topics that come up. And it was about fingers for leggies or legs for fingies so basically uh which one would you prefer you have to pick one yeah. um, this question caused a a ripple in our live streamers and i mean it, it, we, we talked about it after the episode ended we theorized about it overnight and then we woke up and kept talking about it today so there might be bonus content for anyone that wants to listen to us I think even more passionately argue for our side this morning. Yeah, we were we were both definitely. I wouldn't call it an argument. I would call it a heated debate. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, did we say this? You know, Rant is a dear old friend of mine, and I, and and vice versa. I hope that I'm a dear old friend to him. But we are a, a, a couple of pals that are also pals that are a couple. Yeah. So we now are married. We're now betrothed, but we were longtime friends for forever. So this has been. Um, Gosh, I don't know. I've known Rant since 2003. So this has been a long time. 17 years uh, of performing together. And I think I think we've really hit our stride in things that people might know us from, like here, the improvised musical. But additionally, uh, maybe this is our one of our better vehicles because we uh, were used to doing a thing that we used to call car talks. And car talks just meant I would take him home or like he would drive me home in Chicago and we would sit in the car and talk about things that didn't matter at all. He used to act like it frustrated him, but I knew he actually kind of liked it. So I made him do it a lot of the time just to make our friendship grow just in a, in a deep, meaningful way. Yeah, I'm, I'm typically not that much of a conversationalist. I prefer to uh, listen and observe uh, rather than contribute. So that's what a car talk was. Typically, it started with uh, something as, as easy as, what are your dreams? Yeah, what are your dreams is my leaping off point for a solid 10 years. Yeah. I don't know if I got anything out of that one. Every now and then, you'd, you'd perk up at what are your dreams and try to think of something for yourself to, to say. I'm just like, oh, God, you know, I, I, I don't know. But most times, he would just uh, mock me and 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 imitate me uh, through an impression of me asking, what are your dreams? What are your dreams? But they need to stay. Uh, what they in the biz call deflection. Ah, yes, the biz. The biz uh, comedians are known for not really wanting to talk any more deeply because pain is what made them go into comedy. But as you get better and more exposed later with vulnerability, you don't care as much. Yeah, you don't care. Now. And that's where we are right now. We've got some questions that uh, some of you have submitted. Uh, Tara hunted these questions through Facebook. I hunted and- 
uh, you did not disappoint. You gave her tons of questions to choose from. I got to say, like our friends and fans of here uh, really came through because there were something like maybe 250 ish questions. Whoa. Only <laughs> and only like an hour or two, it like filled. Uh, and I, I didn't, I only asked once. It wasn't like I went back and asked a couple of times. So we know that we have a, a well of questions to keep asking per episode for a long, long time. At this rate, Rance and I'll be doing this until forever. Yeah. And if you didn't catch our first episode, we covered five. So we have 245 questions left, apparently. Yeah. You do that. At, at least because that was just the one time ask. If I went back and asked again today, maybe people would ask more questions because now they have context on the show. Oh, yes. Hey, a little bit about the wait, show. Wait, 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 wait. It's not a show. Oh, my God. I just meant a different show. Oh, okay. Here's some context also. Okay. Um, what was the context I was going to tell you about? I just lost it because you interrupted me, rightfully so. It was important. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I know what it was. Last night, we kind of mentioned, like, let's get angry about these things that don't matter so we can better fuel ourselves for the fight ahead and stay stay balanced with people that need our direction, amplification, and love. And I can't tell you how many people, so many people wrote me about that and said that really meant something to them. And they were happy oh. and, like, really delighted to get out stress anger at stupid shit so yeah. that they can feel as angry overall and could better uh, step into their their uh, COVID-19 slash uh, amplification of realistic things that need help year. Yeah. Yeah. So thanks for thanks for telling us that. You've sent in tons of questions. You've given us 250. We've cut through five. This is episode two. And uh, we're just offline uh on our on our lonesome podcast onlys we're just gonna do what like three questions <laughs> yeah we're gonna do three questions when we aren't live uh we'll, we'll do three questions alone how about that per episode and we'll we'll just see what we what we cook up here how about that how about that i like them apples oh good 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 good, good. yeah yeah if rance likes these apples then we're we're all set question one do you like apples <laughs> yes we both agree next question two left Okay, so the idea here is we have these questions to just rant and rave about. That's yeah. the important part of what we covered so far about how like we have to get out this toxic stress. So let's just get mad about things that don't matter and then uh, uh, resume our regular lives with with love and purpose. So here's the deal. Here's question one. It's gonna I'm gonna do a soft lob rants. Okay, a soft okay. lob because I think that I know our answers for this, but I I I. Uh, the first is a soft lob. It has a part two from a different person Ooh. Uh, that just builds upon the question. Okay. Okay. Makes sense? okay. Question one. <music> Brunch, good or bad from Rebecca Fox in North Carolina. Re 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 Rebecca Fox. Yes. Uh, true. I am in love with you and believe me, baby. This time in love won't get away. Brunch is, is it's between okay. meals. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Samantha Fox reference done. Rebecca Fox, our friend from North Carolina. Yes. Brunch, good or bad? Rants. Brunch is great. Uh, I love, I love it, and here's why. Uh, well. In most cases, in a in a in a no masks sit where you like world, mm -hmm. brunch is great. It's 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 a breakfast where you can get up a little bit later. Yeah, and typically, typically the brunch that that I would say that we have is more along the buffet style of like you get you get to pick mm, what you want, mm, what you want, mm, what you want. That's true. Like typically, when we go to brunch, you and I or with family or friends or whatever. If we're going to brunch, the one or two that we attend the most tend to be a build your own brunch sort of thing where you walk through a, a line and there's like, oh, there's a bacon tray and then there's a frittata station and oh. et cetera, et cetera. Or uh, a Chicago style more more than probably here where we are now, you go and you order the, the breakfast you want at one o'clock yeah. basically, right? Um, when we went to Chicago, we went to brunch a lot, and there Every was a, there Every were a lot of great places. And when we moved to Columbus, no offense, not very many brunch. No, places. I say offense, offense. Get them, get, get them where it hurts. Not very many brunch places, and the ones that that uh, we had found um, were 
there were there are a couple that were just like lack luster at best. You know what? I think like if if CBUS people wanted to make a killing, like yeah. in, in in a non, this is just a look. If you're looking for a new business post COVID, let me give you this hot tip: open a brunch place in Central Ohio. Not only are there two million people here, but they are uh, willing to eat brunch. Like people are like fun; they're ready to go out and have some drinks and like eat. There's there's a lot more now than I think there were when we moved here. Yes. Even in a short span that we've been here, there's, there's been an increase, but uh, yeah, I like, I, I love brunch. I, I, I'm trying to, I'm wondering if Rebecca Fox is pitching this question. I wonder if she's talking about the food at brunch, which is a 100% yes. Mm-hmm. Or if she's talking about the culture of brunch, because for women plus that means a different thing. And I wonder if she means like, how do you feel about brunch in the way that like, it's often a lot of white women sitting around sex in the city. Oh, if it's that, I don't go to those brunches. I go to the kind where I eat breakfast foods at a later time of the day. (laughs) Yeah. I love breakfast foods. I'll Mm -hmm. eat breakfast foods any time of the day. And if, uh, if brunch is like a socially acceptable time to do it, the only thing I don't like about brunch is the, is the noise when it's like a busy, good place. It hurts, hurts the old ears. Yeah, it is. It's like constant din. Maybe more at breakfast than at night. Like, I don't think a pub has as much din because maybe it's a softer environment of like there's more carpet or there's, I don't know, like brunch places are really like there's lots of tile and it's really, I don't know, it it just like reverberates, I I think, a lot. And hearing each other at brunch is hard. Which I also think is why people start drinking and then they start screaming at brunch. Look, there's a culture of brunch that I don't love. Now, I, I will say one of our our, our, our preferred places um, that we used to go to uh, was BIPOC owned. And it was a definite, like, better better culture than I'd say, like, the average, like, let's go get mimosas and have some eggs. Uh, and it was, it was, uh, it was lovely. So I'm wondering if maybe there's, like, the place you choose affects it. But if we're talking food here. Yeah. Hell yeah. Which I'm going to give you a follow-up question, Rance. Yeah. Well, real quick, if the debate is like, what do, what do you think about brunch? Why is there a meal slot in between two meal slots? Mm. It's like, awesome. Get rid of the early one. Why are we waking yeah. up so early on a weekend? Throw I that agree. away. Wake up at 11 like everyone should <laughs> and go get yourself some brunch. We, that's, yes, agreed. I think that that's right. If it's, if it's about eliminating a, a meal. I'm for it because I'm, I'm fine waking up in the morning, having some water, having some coffee, stepping into the day a bit. And then I get hungry at like noon. Yeah. So my breakfast is toast. I mean, not literally. You like toast. <laughs> <laughs> Exclusively toast. No, I just mean like, I, I don't really, I don't really have breakfast if I can, if I can avoid it. I, I'd rather have a brunch and then go to dinner later. Yeah. Makes sense. What's the follow-up uh, question? The follow-up question is from Cam Donnelly, and he asks, breakfast for breakfast or breakfast for dinner? This is a great question, coupled with our last question. Yeah, breakfast or everything, man. If you can have an omelet mm-hmm. or bacon and eggs or pancakes mm-hmm. or French toast or any breakfast thing, mm-hmm. it's it's food. Don't let a time of day tell you when to eat it like yeah let's just be okay with the choices we make at any time of day that we make it but rants if we have to choose breakfast for breakfast or breakfast for dinner which is if i may the impetus of this section of this this non-show we're doing okay what do you choose i i think for me i think breakfast for breakfast is great like that's it's a standard and i feel like breakfast for dinner is a treat yeah how's that feel I, I'd lean breakfast for dinner because of, because of what you had mentioned earlier. I'd rather wake up, have some coffee, chill out. And if that, that will, that will mean I've missed the breakfast window or I have to have breakfast at noon to one. So it's like, yeah, I'll I'll have breakfast for dinner. Cause if not, then I'm going to have to have it for lunch, even though I'd be calling it breakfast. So what's an ideal day of eating for you? Like, let's say that like you can eat whatever you want on on a typical day. This is a Rance wakes up and he does what? He has coffee. Coffee. And then? Well, I have a different view on food than most people. That's why I want people to know what your view is. 
Okay, well, my view is that food is who who cares really, because it's it all turns it is it's this fuel and then it goes somewhere and turns into something else. You know what I'm saying? He's he's nodding a lot and wants me to let you know that he's nodding you know and he's getting saying? closer and closer and just letting me know like wink wink. You know he's I'm talking saying? about he's talking about pure fuel. It's a series of proteins, carbs, and fats that turns into poop and. <laughs> As a super taster. Now, this is, let me say this is a, this is an old view. Okay, this is an old view. It's a series of proteins, carbs, and fats that turns that your body uses for fuel, and then it's turned into waste. So, who cares? Is what used to be my thing. But who guess cares? what? I, guess what? I married Tara, and guess what Tara does? Tara cooks with spices. Oh, bing a bong. And flavor has become. A more prevalent thing in my life. Gotcha. So I do like certain uh, tastes and flavors. Um, my my typical here's my here's my uh, dream day. Okay, here we go. Mm -hmm. I wake up, I have coffee, I chill out a bit. Yeah. Whenever I'm ready. Also, I'm waking I'm waking up at like eleven because like I'm there's nothing there's nothing in the morning for me uh, that that needs be. In, in regular time, we also have exceptionally late nights. Yeah. So that that makes sense. Don't don't act like you're just like 13 and rolling through puberty waking no, up. No, 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 no. If no. you're uh, I'm just used to, yeah, I'm used to staying up late and if you're an, or if you're a morning person, I'm not saying you suck. I'm just saying I'm not. So I wake up, I have a cup of coffee, I chill out, I talk uh I talk with my wife and we have some coffee. And ideally then then what I eat is some sort of breakfast thing. In a in a cool world, it's a English muffin sandwich with some mm. egg, ham, mm. some little little drizz of hot sauce, some drizz. Drizz. some salt and pep in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and it's like a good portion of egg, so it's like at least like a two egg thing. So that's like ideal breakfast. Lunch, don't care. Probably uh, if I'm eating breakfast at at like noon, I'm probably not eating lunch. I'm probably uh, I'm probably having uh, an early dinner, like a five or six o'clock dinner. Yeah. Of um, ideal world. Oh man, get some chicken. Put put a layer of sour cream on top of it. Bread it up with some panko and some spices. Grill that up. Get some garlic mashed potatoes with some sour cream and cheese in there. Oh, get some like grilled uh, asparagus or some like. Here's the thing. I didn't used to like hot things. COVID. I'm liking hot sauce. I didn't. I like spicy. Spicy, spicy, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I cooked. Oh, oh. <laughs> like raw, all raw. And I didn't oh, like it. Diet. And uh, Tara and I both did not like sweet potatoes. And for whatever reason, during COVID, roast us up some sweet potatoes. We've been cooking little, every day, yeah. Little, little drizz of olive oil and some salt and pepper. Oh, oh. the drizz, the drizz. I think yeah. the drizz is key. We've learned a lot about, I, I mean, I think I was an okay cook prior to this shelter in place time, but something has changed during this shelter in place time where now I'm like cooking every day for f kind of fun. Like where it's like, Oh, this will be neat. Like what roasted vegetables can I make tonight? And yeah. it becomes a project. So it's, it's fun around our very heavily, <laughs> our heavily in interneted days, which are basically how we work now. We teach online and things like that. So when we step away, it's like to go on a walk or to like cut up <laughs> A million roasted vegetables. That's like what our days have become. That for sure. This morning, in fact, we had eggs in a nest or birds in a nest or the nest hole or whatever you would call it. What else would you call that? I think that's like um uh so I think it's been called like toad in a hole or something like that. Yeah, toad in a hole is what people call it. You know, where you put you cut your bread, you put an egg in the middle. We found that this is a fun trick. Uh we have a seeded bread. I I butter it. Mm. I cut a hole in the middle. I put the egg in the middle. I scramble it a little bit for Rance because he doesn't like he doesn't like like a runny egg. So I scramble it kind of so it's like not not super runny. I put yeah. rosemary on it, everyone, to pay attention oh. to that. rosemary, like fresh rosemary from a garden and salt and pepper, et cetera. And then we put like a little turkey or ham on top with cheese. Mm. It's, so good. it's so good. And that's like a nice that's that'll get you through like you don't need any food for hours and hours and hours because it's protein fueled so maybe that's why we're also fantasizing about brunch right now because it's consistently great every day or many days yeah and it's kind of the way we eat anyway you're right like we eat like two meals a day basically but they are sometimes 
very healthy and sometimes stupid. Yeah. Because that's the way humans are. That's that. Okay. So you are saying brunch or sorry, breakfast for breakfast. Or are you saying breakfast for dinner? I'm saying breakfast for breakfast. I'm saying breakfast for lunch. I'm saying breakfast for dinner. I'm you saying can't breakfast. Bend the question. You're bending it to say breakfast for always. Is that your answer? I'm saying breakfast for dinner because <laughs> technically I eat breakfast at lunch and it's not an option. What I'm really saying is I will ignore this question, eat breakfast whenever I GD please, because I love breakfast foods. So yeah, you, know what? you know what? Here's what we feel strongly about in this question. We can do what we want. Yeah. Why yeah. limit yourself? Yeah. Why limit yourself to one or the other? Breakfast yeah. for breakfast, breakfast for lunch, breakfast for dinner. Done. Ron Swanson. <laughs> oh, I see. It's the Ron Swanson plan. Yeah. That's fair. That's fair. Uh, okay. You want, I'm going to give you a question number two. Okay, shifting gears. Mm -mm. Where do dogs go in their dreams from Bridget Mendiuk in Columbus? Mm. Where do dogs go in their dreams? Where do you think they go in their dreams? Me? Yeah. Oh, are you talking to me? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know who I thought would be here on the non-live version of this, <laughs> this non-show. Uh where do dogs go in their dreams? Here's here's my guess. Uh, let's let's take a let's let's make a hypothesis. Okay. So if 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 people this this could open a really great dream conversation in general. I think that people and it's it's obviously like theorists believe this as well. It's not like something I just cooked up today. Uh, when people have experiences in their daytime or they have interactions that 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 can affect their content. I think we had just talked about this. Um, uh -huh where you had just read that like when we sleep we clear chemicals or something wasn't that an article you just read yeah i that uh the rest of your body has sort of this um lymphatic system that's continually like cleaning and getting rid of toxins but your brain doesn't mm -hmm. have that and that when you sleep is when your brain goes through the chemical process of re removing the toxins. So like if you stay up for way longer than you should, your brain is essentially clogging up with toxins, which is probably why you start to hallucinate or have weird things like you lose the ability to understand words or stuff like that. Your brain doesn't clean out toxins until you're sleeping. Okay. So if that's the case, I would assume that dogs have similar things happen to them when they sleep and they're also like hallucinating a bit or whatever you would call. There's like a weird, you know, dysphoria for them that's similar to what humans are experiencing. So they're probably thinking about what's already known to them. But I don't know if they like trip out as hard as as humans would. So my guess would be they're probably thinking about running, probably thinking about yards probably thinking about grass and animals they've seen. I would think they are thinking of their human companion and mixing those ideas throughout the dream, like thinking of what they know, being chased. I would assume that maybe they're chased or chasing things that they take interest in, like, like, uh, uh, you know, tiny chipmunks are out there or like a, a giant bone has decided to chase them back. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> like that's the dream that I would think is like, what if something that they chase chases them? Uh, we, have, we have two dogs who are just the best. Uh, and they, they often, I think every night, like kind of like sleep whimper. And we always try to read if they're, if they're nervous, like if, if it sounds like it's a, a frantic, like scared one, we'll try to wake them up gently. And if it feels like they're just chasing stuff, then we let them. Yeah. I don't know. Like, I, I'm wondering if like, I feel like our dogs get chased by something because, or they worry. I'll say that I also think they worry because our dogs are definitely, uh, they're not trained to be, but they're very, very emotional support doggy. Like, uh, because I had an injury when we first got them. So they're always like very concerned about us. So I wonder if they also get worried. Like if they're just like, oh, I've got to help frantic anxiety dreams. That could be. I also feel like our, so our dogs go, uh, they're, they're yard dogs. So they go out in the yard and they'll bark at everything that, everything that like it's within a certain perimeter. And sometimes at the front window, they'll bark too. So I feel like their dreams are just like reliving that. 
I think they're just having dreams of people walking on sidewalks or bees. Like Addison likes to chase bees. <laughs> just like what? Like a giant bee? Like a bee coming at her? Or little ones that she's successfully capturing. Yeah, we can't believe, look, our, our smaller dog, Addison, chomps bees. Like, just can't get enough. And we're always like, no, because we're trying to, I mean, A, we're trying to save her from not getting stung. And B, we're trying to conserve bees. So we're just like, don't, don't, oh, no, oh, no. And uh, yeah, she, she don't care. She don't care. She'll like, she'll go after flies. She'll go after bees, whatever's flying. She's just real excited about it. It's a yeah. game. And our other dog, Clark, will run after a fly. He'll grab it and then he'll spit it out because he hates what he did. Regret. <laughs> <laughs> fly regret. Instant regret. Instant regret. So, I mean, what's my answer? I don't know. I mean, I, I think that I think it's really general. I think it's probably like humans. Like, can we say what humans dream about? everything right like but there are often these themes that come up in human dreams that are like um shyness or anxiety or relief or reuniting or whatever it might be like passion i don't know what else people dream about but these kind of like themed uh themed episodes of whatever you dream about right with a lot of trippiness involved i'm just wondering if dogs have the same trippiness to dreams that humans do you know, that's like, yeah. that's the part of human dreams is that you wake up and you're like, wait a minute, you were there, but it wasn't really you. It was a cyborg. And uh, the cyborg turned into a mound of butterflies. And then I oh, also, I was Portia de Rossi. Anyway, you get it. And we were at school. It's like, it doesn't make any sense, right? There's like, no, there's no, there's no linear thought. So I'm wondering if maybe they don't have linear thought either. I think of all that, they'll they probably just dream that Portia Del Rossi is there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, big, big Arrested Development fans. Big Arrested Development fans. I don't yeah. know what they think about. But I mean, I don't know. I, I picked the most random person I could. I have no idea why that was the one. But you know what I'm saying? That's kind of how dreams are, too, where you're like, why was this person? Why was my third grade friend in my dream? My current no. friend in third grade. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Not my friend from third grade, but my third grade friend that I hang out with every Monday. Yeah, the one that's in third grade that you hang out with. <laughs> yeah, why? You know, Tara, I'd be curious. I'm not sure. Uh, like, hey, we're still in the early pro uh, phases of this this podcast, and I'm not sure where we were, where it's where it's going, or how it's going uh -huh. to be put up. But I'd be curious to hear from viewers and comments somewhere. Oh, how do um, you? What do you think dogs dream of? I would love that. We'll have a link on every episode that you can write us at our uh, our email address. And we would sure love to hear from you. We have a domain that's it's not a show dot com. So shortly after, there will be a, an, an email where you can write us and tell us what you think dogs will dream about. And I would love to find out that that stuff is and we can refer back and tell people what was written in. I would love that. We had fan art for the first time yesterday. Oh my God. Oh my God. I just, I can't get enough of it. And uh, yeah. So if we have things like fan art or questions or answers, they can all go to the same address. We'll, we'll come back to that. Okay. Question two down. Boom. One more. Oh, you ready? Ready for one more for the episode? Three questions in an episode. Two, 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 three. <laughs> This is a stupid question. Oh, I'm good. it. Okay, we're gonna go. We're gonna go hard at the end. From Joel Luscombe in New Zealand, we've got international rants. Boom. New Zealand. How about that? He asks, "Why aren't adults called old babies?" <laughs> why aren't babies called pre-adults? Next question. Why are they called pre-teens? Yeah, see, I think that's what the, I don't think this is just a nonsense question. I, I think it's very silly, but I think there are some legitimate reasonings here that we have to parse through. So the, when you're the, born, you're a baby. Yeah. When you grow out of being a baby, you're. A toddler? Yeah, you're a toddler. And then you become, I guess, a child. Child? A technical or a kid. And then you become a tween. A tween or a pre, I think teen, tween and preteen are kind of. Sure. Pre, preteen and tween, either same. one. They're basically with the same, same yep. thing. Then you're a teen. 
and then you're an adult. Yeah. So I guess like there's there's a lot of terms in there that aren't baby focused. And then you're a liability. Yeah, then you're a liability. Well, you could argue you're a liability the whole time because you're like a dependent. Yeah, more so ahead of time. Like one of my dad's favorite stories is I was as a toddler about to put one end of an extension cord in my mouth that was plugged in on the other end. So oh, no. Very no. Much more a liability then. What happened? What did you do? Tell he us like got, he got he got it right before I popped it in my mouth. And it, it was plugged in, you said? Yeah. It wasn't just like a cord, which would have been gross anyway, but not fatal. No, it was the it was charged. <laughs> <laughs> the old charged cord. Yeah. I'm going to I'm going to say a title uh a title of a book and you tell me what type of genre it is. Okay? You you might you might be able to follow. Questions? What are you talking about? This is for you. This is for you. What what type of book is The Babysitter's Club? Preteen. It is preteen? Uh I I'd, I'd say it's preteen or tween. I I don't think it's high school, but I could be wrong cuz it was right after me. So I'm not positive about, I mean, it was around the same time, but I was definitely a uh, Sweet Valley High. But preteen is how they would define it in like a bookstore or a library? Like, I think it's young, young adult. Young adult is what yeah. I was looking for. So young adult old baby is is like, I have heard I have heard it referred to as young adult. That's true. For teens, but not for babies. Well, let's go deep into this question and just give it the honor that it doesn't deserve. <laughs> <laughs> Take that, New Zealand. Yeah. Uh, I wonder if it's like, are we as a society, I'm going to go real deep here and try to figure it out. Are we as a society afraid of the titling of old? So we think that like old is inherently a, um, like an insult. So saying old baby is different than saying young adult because our society is so messy and doesn't honor old people. Yeah, and it could just be that it's like we're like trying to look forward and not to the to the past. So it's like a young adult means like you're on your way to adult versus That's what I mean. Yeah. You don't, you don't like nostalgically look back at your babydom. I mean, yeah. You wouldn't be like I'm an old baby because it doesn't prove what you've learned whereas young adult may say you're on a voyage to becoming fully actualized in our society's brain. Yeah. And you're on your way to being that thing, but also at baby ends at toddler and toddler ends at child and child ends at tween. And so it's like, mm. you don't say I'm an old child <laughs> because you'd also know there was a phase in between that you've already gone through. If you did say you were an old child, I feel like there'd be a lot of stigma attached to that. Like you're probably like a trust fund kid that hasn't grown up yet. Yeah. I'm but we will, you would say like you're an old soul, which means like, your soul seems like it's from a different era, but souls don't go through like a pupil and a larval stage and a <laughs> like soul stays well, soul. That we, know of, that we know of. I mean, like, what if what if a soul, if this old soul idea is real? Yeah. Then I would assume you also can have a new soul. So you can be a pupa soul. But it's it would just be a new a, a soul is like starts a soul, ends a soul, but goes through time. Where it's, it does it, it's not like does it you're if your soul doesn't go through like like ah I'm a baby with a soul and as I turn to a child my soul goes into a chrysalis and forms into the next state of soul it's like the soul is the soul forever so it makes sense to to define it by new or old and, hey, Rand, yeah have you heard of my new band next state of soul oh man that's there isn't that your Sort of like current day folk group that still is really like ban apartheid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We were against apartheid, and we also like I'll tell you what we also uh, you know who opens for us is Pupa Soul, and they're um, mm -hmm. they're a really innovative uh, global global funk band. Pupa Soul sounds more like a Pokemon character. Pupa Soul. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what the I get, and they that would actually make sense because they could evolve and go through. Sure. Uh, yeah, like I don't, I can't remember what that's called. Sorry, sorry, Pokemon fans, where it's like they up. They up. I also <laughs> don't know. I also don't remember. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, I mean, they, they, they change. They change. Yeah. 
So, so in conclusion, <laughs> in conclusion, I think it's because I of old babies. Too many phases in between. So, meaning that they should say like old young adults or old teens. Is that what you're saying? They should refer back to the last last metamorphosis, or I think you refer to the state they're in, like teen and preteen. Te like preteen uh, defines it as I'm not a teenager yet, mm -hmm. but maybe I'm going through puberty, so I'm like physically there. But I wouldn't refer to like a cow as a young burger. Well, that's wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> we are hold on a second. We are not a product of the thing that we become. I mean, if that's meaning that like we are being harvested. So, yeah, I don't know that you call like, for instance, I don't know that you call raisins old grapes. <laughs> ah, they, they should though. Oh man, that's the best example yet. <laughs> I mean, do you know what I mean? I don't. I don't know that like I would call a cow a pre burger because some people don't eat cows and a lot of people wouldn't want to. Nor is a cow's worth only about what they become for like human consumption, right? So like, so we could go deep here and say that's why they're not called that. Okay. But, what about a what about a burger? That's it's it's become a burger already. Would you call it an old cow? <laughs> No, no, because it would gross people out because no one likes to think about where their food is sourced from. And that's the same reason we don't say old babies. It <laughs> uh, that is the dumbest false equivalency we've made. <laughs> no. Yes. It's I don't think it is. But it's, I, I, I don't think you'd say like, I don't think you'd call a cow an old calf. Right. Because it's gone from a calf to a cow. Mm -hmm. It's. It's gone from pu uh, larval to pupil. It's made the ch it's made the transition. Why are you so stuck on the larva state? Why is that your fight? It's like, it's, it's a it's a, a single organism that goes through three clearly different states. So it's like okay. So your major your major fight here is that because we aren't Benjamin buttoning and going in reverse. Yeah. Because we are we think time is linear and we're going forward. Yes. We are saying that the the most evolved state is adulthood. Yes. Okay. And I'm saying that like having no worth with that, but just knowing that that's like the most that's as far as we can go. I'm saying there's a thing that isn't said that does work, which is <laughs> new human, young human, old human. Like if we just define it as human, mm -hmm. no matter what age we are, we're human the whole way through. Mm -hmm. And then young, old defines wh where in the timeline of a typical lifespan of a human uh, you might be. Mm -hmm. But old baby, an old baby is three. Like once you get past that, mm. Mm, you're, not, you're, not, you're an old toddler. Or you're like a old toddler baby. is an elderly baby. <laughs> <laughs> yes. A toddler is an elderly baby. Okay. Okay. I get it. So that's why we're saying because of the, not, not because it's not a valid idea that we could move forward, but because the last thing is what you typically are leaving. Baby is no longer relevant. Yes. I think we did it. Yes. I think we cracked this code. How do you feel about that one, Rance? That was like, that was like the, probably the most controversial and least uh definitive answer like i don't think i don't think there'd be a lot of strong clear debate on that one i feel like there'd be a lot of angles that people would be like i get it not like the, not like episode ones where we talked about like each your fingers being tacos which they definitely are not okay well here it goes you know that's the thing too everyone that's listening right now i should let you know that we generally rance and i are trying to keep like the controversial topics and i'm controversial is I think it's a little bit hyperbolic, but you know what I mean? The controversial topics we're keeping for live because we want to see what people say and weigh in. And right now, after you listen to this episode, we have to wait for your response through email so we can refer back and read what you say, which is also in my book, exciting because I love mail. But, mm. uh, but that being said, that's why we want those live ones to be ones that people are going to be instantaneously angry about. And I don't think this would cause anger. It's just a thinker. It's just a thinker. <laughs> a 
Hey, did you have fun today? I hope you had fun. If you are listening to this uh, through our website, thank you so much. I hope you subscribe and, and, and jump on that train and listen to this podcast all the time. Rance and I are pushing these out pretty quick to make oh. sure you have something to listen to. So when you take your little walks every day or you drive to work and 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 uh, uh, you, you go on a little spin or you whatever you need to do, you're cooking in your kitchen, ugh. Whatever you need to do that gets you through the day, you just have little friendly voices that hopefully make you laugh along the way and, and just make you think. As always, uh, this is this is produced by the Nest Theater. Go to nesttheater.com to find out more about seeing live improv in Columbus or taking online virtual classes or seeing virtual shows during this wonderful COVID stuff. Uh, but you can go to the Nest Theater on Twitch, YouTube, or Facebook and catch varying degrees of different things. Varying degrees. Varying degrees. Uh, we love you. Thanks for listening, ding-dongs. It wasn't a show. This isn't a show. It's not a show. It's not a show.